look at where do I go? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Another one. And it's September now, and so we are going to treat the cattails. This is a 53% glyphosate, as well as a surfactant. And so we're gonna mix it based on the labeling. I'm gonna apply it with a pump sprayer. And while we're heading down to do the work, we've got some more work going on. We actually took out the old set of steps to replace them with a, a more safer, consistent riser with multiple landings and different terraces here. And that's just gonna be so much better in so many ways. The glyphosate is a systematic herbicide where you spray on the emergent part of the cattails and then what the surfactant does is it helps the, the herbicide stick to the leaves. And then because we're doing this in September in the fall, this is when cattails are trying to gain all the nutrients and suck down into their roots to um, kind of make it through the winter. And so right now, the fall time, in September is when you want to focus your cattail efforts. So here's our before, and this will take a little while. These leaves will brown, but rather than just cutting them off. Guys, this was literally six months earlier, earlier this spring, and there was no cattails above the surface. I had shaved them off completely down to the bottom, and what grew up this year, you can see in this video, they just exploded. And so it behooves you to get after them early. Otherwise, if left unattended, this is what it'll look like in a few short months. All right, so here's the process. Not that exciting, but I'm just going to get after coating all of these leaves that are above the water line. It's rated for aquatic use. So I just made my way around the entire pond trying to coat all of the leaves. I bet I put six gallons total in all of the cattail stands around the pond. And I think that was good enough for our application. What we also got going on here is some more landscaping around our, our pump house. And that's just the start of it. While I've been trying to spray and kill the cattails, Jeff has been spraying all the new garden plantings to get them to grow. For there's a season for everything under the sun, a time to plant and a time to root up. The waterfall has become the centerpiece of an entire backyard garden oasis, and I haven't posted a video in a while because it seems like all we've been doing is watering plants and grass seed. And we did make time to make it to the Vikings game up in Minneapolis. Skull Vikes. Now here's a few teaser shots of the backyard garden build. I'll make a fuller video in the future, but we put all sorts of mulch and rock and repurposed the steps here to tidy up the pond edge and really just tie the whole backyard together and showcase the waterfall. This view from afar halfway through, really kind of seeing it all come together. It's really awesome. Ho oh, ho ho, guys I threw on a rattle trap. Like a jigging wrap out in the deep. And I think we're going to get our, a look at one of the larger smallmouth that we've got going in the pond here. Heck yeah. There we go. Guys, that's getting to be more of a fish here. Yes, such a pretty fish. We're gonna go almost 13. It's a good looking fish. 
Haha, <laughs> got one. What do I got? I think this is a shiner. Look at this, guys. <laughs> Good grief. Look at that golden shiner. Taking on a shiner bait. Got him right in the eyeball. So here's our before. We are now about almost two weeks after spraying these guys. So we're about three and a half weeks. I think it's now time to cut these out and collect them. And it didn't take me long to figure out that this was not going to be the way I was going to get all of these in. It was hard. The weed razor didn't really cut through the dry stalks and I got blisters on my hands pulling on this rope. So I had to figure out a better way. Okay, so the weed razor is certainly cutting stuff up. That is barely a dent after like eight throws. And after an hour's worth of throwing and pulling all this crap up, this smells nasty. And so back to the drawing board, I think I figured out a better way, not just for efficiency, but also for entertainment value. I'm going to bring out a little bit more firepower and see if I can consume these cattails um, to make it a little bit easier to clean up. I was being cautious here, not wanting this fire to spread any quicker because I had read that it certainly can. Okay, that's not that bad. I also chose a windless night because we've been really dry here in Iowa. I would have expected it to go a little bit. It is warm. Makes pretty quick work. And it is hot. It's a fast flame. There we go. <laughs> That's a warm fire. Fire on the pond. That's going to do it for that section. The other ones are just a little bit too green still. And that sure beats chopping them all down and hauling them in, hauling them across the pond, stacking them up on the dock like I did there. I'm just going to keep working my way around. That's the way to get rid of cattails. And here's the aftermath. About a month later, after spraying initially and then waiting for all the leaves to die, torching all of the dry cattails above the water, and with the chemicals getting sucked down into their roots, we'll see what comes back next year.
So here's the deal. We've got a groundhog that is burrowing into the side of the hill and we're all the rocks have been placed and they just make a mess and so I got to get them out of here. So in my attempt to, to catch groundhogs, I got this little coon found the trap. He's just a little guy. Want it out of there. Pretty decent swimmers. So, as I was standing here at the feeder, I saw this smallmouth come in here and explode on this bluegill. And it's fun to see the predators assert themselves more as they grow. And you'll see the trap net in the water here in an upcoming video. You'll get to see what I pull out of here. And I also try my hand at cast netting. Oh, that was my best one yet. And you can see what kind of fish I pull up. If this was helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you're not already because we're going to be stocking some special forage fish to create a diverse forage base in the pond with some northern crayfish, some grass shrimp, some mosquito fish and all sorts of beneficial creatures. So stick around. We'll see you on the next one. God bless.